So today I was making homemade pumpkin spice cupcakes with a cream cheese frosting and I know that all of you guys pretty much know how in love with the beauty and fashion world I am, but something that a lot of you guys might not know is that pretty much my favorite thing to do ever is cooking and baking. I'm obsessed with it and I don't just do it for the outcome of like the food, I do it for the joy of actually like baking the stuff and like cooking the stuff. I love just the process and uh, measuring everything out. I don't know. I just, I find it so relaxing and I love doing it. So I have been baking and cooking for as long as I can remember. My mom said when I was two years old, I started asking her to, you know, help her in the kitchen and stuff. So it's just something that I love to do. And today I decided that I wanted to show you guys this recipe and how I make it. I have three different ways that you can decorate this cupcake. Obviously there are countless ways you could do it, but I have three that are kind of my go-to ways. They taste absolutely amazing. So um, I wanted to film this for you guys and let me know if you would like for me to do more videos like this. I would literally love it. I would like change this channel into a cooking and baking slash vlog channel and then still have my beauty and fashion channel, but I am so obsessed with it and I would probably do like three of these videos a week, but only if you guys would like to watch them and stuff. So I know that this is probably going to be a pretty long video and also I just want to let you guys know that lighting and also my camera angles I've never filmed in the kitchen before or anything like that so it definitely was a little bit of a um, not struggle for me but more of a learning curve for me so I want to go ahead and show you guys how to make these homemade pumpkin spice cupcakes with cream cheese frosting that are absolutely melt in your mouth to die for. They are perfect for, obviously Halloween is coming up, you could definitely do this for a Halloween get together or party or anything like that. But also just for the colder months, you know, autumn and winter and stuff, they're so chilly outside and it's nice to just sit down with this and I like to serve it with a hot drink and I have never, ever, ever not had people rave and rave about these cupcakes. They are just absolutely amazing. And I know I'm, I'm rambling so much and I need to go ahead and get started with the video, but I also want to let you guys know that if you don't do the frosting and you um, cook some raisins and also some nuts in with it, um, they make really delicious breakfasts like pumpkin spice muffins. So there are two different ways you can do this. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I hope you guys enjoy this. Leave in the comments below if you guys would like for me to do more videos like this. And if you do, would you like for me to do more like baking, decorating videos? Or would you like actual like cooking videos like cooking like lunches and dinners and things like that so definitely let me know in the comments below I hope you guys enjoy this and um, if you decide to make this recipe film it as a video response and leave it below I will um, no I won't talk to you guys later I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to make it and then I'll talk to you later all right so go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees which is 177 degrees Celsius and make sure that you place the rack on the middle of your oven. That's the way that the cupcakes are gonna get baked through the most. And next you wanna take a medium sized mixing bowl with a sifter. So I have mine right here. Sorry, I've like never filmed a video like this. I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do with the camera. But now you wanna take one and a half cups of all purpose flour. That is 195 grams. So I'm just going to start by putting some of this in the sifter. And I know that sometimes, um, and oh, the reason we're sifting this by the way is just because sometimes it has lumps and you wanna get all those little lumps out. So I know that um, a lot of people like to sift just like tapping down like that, but that takes so long. So what I do is just make sure I've washed my hands and then I just kind of press it through and I find that it goes through a lot faster and um, you don't have to wait quite as long. So I'm just gonna push all of this through. Okay, so once all of that is sifted through, next you wanna put into the sifter one teaspoon of baking soda, and I already kind of combined these in one just to make this video a little bit faster, but one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a fourth teaspoon of ground ginger, a fourth teaspoon of ground cloves, and half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just going to pour all of this into the sifter as well and make sure that you kind of get all of it um, out of this cup. All right, so now I'm just gonna press this through as well. Super quick, and then you just wanna kind of mix this all together so that it is evenly all kind of coated and distributed and the cinnamon gets on all the flour. Woo, that just like flew up at my face. You might wanna do this a little bit slower than I am or a little bit more slowly. I'm not exactly sure which one is the proper form of English, but insert correct one here. All right, so now you just wanna set this aside and then grab a 
big bowl. This is just a big mixing bowl and you wanna put in, how much butter is this? Oh, half a cup of butter and this needs to be softened to room temperature. So what I like to do is just set it out on the counter probably about an hour before I start baking and then it's nice and soft for me. So I'm gonna take an electric hand mixer because I don't have one of those like, I don't know, big like mixer things. I just have a hand one. So I'm just gonna start by kind of mushing this butter up and then we're gonna add the sugar which is one cup or 200 grams of sugar. Mush stage completed. It's basically just all in the mixers, but that's okay. Now you want to add in, I do about half of the sugar at a time. Oh, and the reason you want a large bowl is because this is going to fly up and also do it on a, um, a low setting. If you take it all the way up to a high setting, it's just going to fly everywhere. Add the other half of sugar. You can kind of mix it in first before you turn it on so that there's not so much sugar that is just gonna fly everywhere. Now I have two large eggs and I'm just gonna start these. I'm gonna pour just one at a time in and then I'm going to beat this in as well. And then before I add the other one, I'm just gonna take a rubber spatula and just scrape the sides down so that I make sure I get all of this together and then I'm going to add the other large egg into this. All right, now I'm going to add one teaspoon of organic um, vanilla extract and by the way i've heard from a lot of people that you want to make sure to use organic because it tastes better than i guess the non-organic so i'm just going to add that and then beat that in really quickly all right so now we have our flour mixture right here and then we also have three fourths cups of, um, I think this is pumpkin puree. This is the one that I got. I'll actually show you guys the can that I used. So it is just 100% pumpkin, America's favorite pumpkin. And it looks like this. You wanna make sure that you get actual canned pumpkin and not pumpkin pie filling. There's a huge difference apparently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by adding a little bit of the flour in and I'm gonna beat that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the um, pumpkin back to the flour, back to the pumpkin, and then the flour once more. Oh my goodness, this already smells amazing. Ha! Ah, I cannot wait. Okay, but I'm gonna have to because this has raw eggs in it and I've had E. coli before and I am not going to do it again. So add the flour and then you also wanna make sure that you get as much off the spatula as you can since that is Part of your ingredients. I don't really like to waste anything. I like to try to get it all. So just as much as you can. And then, dun dun dun. All right, so now our batter is finished and I really wish you guys could smell this. It smells so amazing. But now I'm going to grab my cupcake tin and I've lined it with 12 little foil cupcakes. This recipe actually makes 12 cupcakes, but obviously if you doubled it, you could make 24 or however many, you know, you want to make. All right. So I like to use just an ice cream scoop to fill my cupcake tins just because I find it is very easy and it also gets the same amount in each tin. So I'm just going to fill all of these up evenly. Who is that? Text in my cell phone. All right, so there you go. Now I'm going to put these into the oven. Like I said, it was preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna put them in for 18 to 20 minutes, but I like to start checking them around 15 minutes just because I really don't like for them to get burnt. Right, so these are going to be so yummy and I wanna go ahead and just show you guys really quickly what they look like in the oven just cause they're so yummy. I just put them in. So yeah, they haven't been in there more than like 14 seconds or something. But I also wanted to let you guys know that filling up the little um, cupcake tins the same amount, it's not only gonna make them look 
look pretty, obviously, because, you know, they'll look more symmetrical and stuff, but also for cooking time, if you have one that has less than another one, it's not gonna cook through the same amount of time, and then they're not all gonna taste as yummy. So that's why I like to use an ice cream scoop. It makes it really super simple and easy. So now, these need to sit in there for, obviously, about 18 minutes. So what I like to do is go ahead and clean up the dishes. My least favorite part about cooking and baking is definitely doing the dishes, but I find that if I'm putting something like in the oven or something, if I go ahead and just clean up while that's cooking, it's out of the way. And then also we're about to make icing together. So um, I'm going to need some of the things that I just used for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the dishes and I will let you guys know when these are done. Oh my goodness gracious, you guys. I really wish they had invented Smell-O-Vision by now. I swear my entire apartment is smelled up with this pumpkin cinnamon heavenly scent it is amazing but anyways i just wanted to show you guys i just pulled them out of the oven and mine took 19 minutes to bake by the way um for reference for you guys and i have a wire rack uh wire rack set up and then i put the muffin or cupcake pan on the wire rack i'm gonna let it cool like this for about 10 minutes then i'm going to take them out of the muffin pan and just put them on the wire rack to continue cooling so when your cupcakes only have about 10 more minutes to cool you want to go ahead and start on your frosting so the first thing you want to do is take four ounces of cream cheese which is 113 grams i have mine cut into four little cubes right here and you want this to be at room temperature so i'm just going to put those into my big mixing bowl and then i'm going to take my electric mixer and just kind of blend this up a little bit and it is tied around a water bottle there we go all right that literally takes like five seconds now you want to add your butter which is two tablespoons or 25 grams of unsalted butter and again that is at room temperature so add that in all right then you want half a teaspoon of the pure vanilla extract and I just have a fourth of a teaspoon here, so I'm just gonna do two of them. All right, and then I have one and a half cups of confectioners or powdered sugar, and I sifted this just like I sifted the um, flour at the beginning of this video. So what I wanna do is just add a little bit of this at a time and start mixing it in. So I'll probably do three or four different batches because if you just dump all of this dry onto this wet, it's just gonna make the wet kind of harden at the bottom and then um, it'll be really hard to mix and it won't taste as good. All right, so now our icing is done. And after I added that last little bit of um, powdered sugar, I actually mixed it for probably two or three minutes. You want it to get really, really creamy, and you'll be able to tell when it has the consistency of icing. Now, if it's a little bit too thick, you can add some milk to it if you want, but I wouldn't recommend adding too much because you don't want it to be runny where it's gonna run off the cupcakes, obviously. And the other thing is if it's too thin or too runny, you can add a little bit more powdered sugar. This is pretty much the best cream cheese frosting I've ever tasted in my entire life. So whether you're making it for this or if you're making it for like a red velvet cake, absolutely love this recipe. All right, so now it is time to ice and decorate our cupcakes, my personal favorite part aside from actually eating them. So I have three different ways that I like to decorate these cupcakes depending on where you're going or who is eating them. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing I do to ice, you can obviously just take one of these cupcakes and spread some of the icing on it. That is totally fine. But I like to first peel off all the papers. I feel like a lot of people don't take the time to do this when they're making cupcakes and it really just makes it look like an individual person's like cake instead of a cupcake without the papers. Because when you're baking an actual cake, you know, you don't put the um, paper lining on. So once they're cooled, they literally, it just like falls off, the paper does, and it doesn't mess up your cupcake. And look how cute the little design is, if you guys can see that. So I take those off of all of my cupcakes, and I'm just doing three to demonstrate for you guys, just for the sake of time. So I have those. Now for icing, like I said, you can either spread it on with a knife or a spatula or a spoon or anything like that, but I like to take a plastic Ziploc bag, and you want to, Fold it over about halfway like this, and then I just scoop the icing into this bag. And you can get bags that are actually made for this, but I find that these work just as well and they are less expensive. So I'm just putting the icing in here. Do to do to do. 
do 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 all right and then you want to squeeze all of the icing down to one corner of the bag and you want to make sure that you don't have any air in it so squeezing it all down All right, and then when you have it all to one corner of the bag, you just kind of want to twist the bag a little bit and you want to pat out any um, air bubbles that you have because you don't want those. Okay, so twist, 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 get rid of any air bubbles. And then you want to cut a little hole at the bottom of this. Now I recommend starting smaller because you can always make it a bigger hole, but you can't go back and make it smaller. All right, so then with my right hand, I'm just gonna test that perfect. I like how thick that line is. So I'm just gonna hold one of the cupcakes and then I found that the key to this is basically, um, well, let me see. I actually wanna make this um, a little bit of a bigger hole. I find that the key to this is actually to, sorry about that, I was concentrating, um, use even pressure across the whole thing and then it'll look perfect. So I like to start on the outside and just evenly start going in spirals. And if you have air bubbles, it's going to like um, bubble a little bit. So, and then that is how, ooh, that one's ugly. Do you see that little line of space I left? I'm going to cover that. But now I'm going to do another one for you guys because I don't like the way that one looks. So, around town. I feel like SpongeBob or something. I don't know why. Aw, that one turned out pretty. Look how cute that is. That's super cute. Okay, so now to garnish the top, there are three different ways that I like to do this. The first one is to take some sort of nuts. You can use pecans or walnuts or even hazelnuts, but I like to use pecans. So they are chopped up and I'm just going to sprinkle. I'm gonna do it on this one, if you guys can see, because I'm gonna save the prettiest one for my favorite one. Um, okay, so you just wanna sprinkle a little bit of this on here. All right, so this is what this one looks like, and personally, it is the best tasting, in my opinion. All right, so on the second one, I'm actually just going to sprinkle, and I'm gonna move this one over here. Sorry, I should be more organized. I'm actually just going to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on here, and I find, I'm actually gonna use my fingers to pinch. I find that if you just take a tiny bit, um, it just gives it a tiny more flavor, and it looks super cute, so I'm just, Putting that on this one. Awesome, so that's what this one looks like. So I think that looks really cute as well. But then I think, hold on, let me wash my hands really fast. Okay, sorry about that. So the last thing I like to do are, these are those little like um, pumpkin candy corn things. I like to pop just one of these on the very tippy top. And I think that is so adorable. So I'll show you guys this one. So that's what that one looks like. Obviously you can decorate them however you would like. You could even leave them plain if you want to. I find these cupcakes are best when served with a hot beverage. My favorite one would have to be hot chocolate with some whipped cream, marshmallows underneath, and then I like to sprinkle it with a little bit of cinnamon. But you could also do warm tea, you could do coffee, you could even do hot apple cider. Mm, I cannot even begin to explain how good these smell. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave in a comment below if you want more videos like this, and I will talk to you guys later. I'm going to go devour a couple of these. Bye.